without further ado, I would like to pass you over to our facilitator for the evening, Catherine Gretzinger, uh, to introduce the panel and to start us off this evening. Thanks, Catherine. Um, first, I'd like to say how uh, wonderful it is to see so many of you up, out to talk about poverty in such a wealthy city, when it's easy to ignore poverty if you want to. I was driving my son to work this morning, his work, school, with a friend of his in the back of the car. We were driving to West Vancouver, which is where he's participating in a program this year. And they were talking about a boy at school who came into the classroom the other day with a pair of $1,500 running shoes. And the boys were sitting in the back seat talking about how cool it was that so-and-so had $1,500 running shoes. And I said, boys, did you know that there are a whole bunch of people living in this city right now who make less than $1,500 going to work full-time every month? And they, they kind of looked at me and I said, it's true. So I said to my son, Pull out your phone, and I had him go and start Googling and pulled up a couple of stories that have recently been in the news about living wage and such, or not so living wage. And I had him do a little research. And then he said to me, Mom, how is this possible? And that's the point. How is it possible that we live in a place where some people can walk around in $1,500 shoes or drive a $100,000 car or live in a condominium uh, that costs them millions of dollars and other people can't? What's going on there? That's why we're here tonight and it's wonderful to see so many of you here paying attention to this issue that all of us really need to be paying attention to. Um, I had a bit of a moment earlier, I was just mentioning to our panel, I've been doing this kind of community work for three decades, uh, working across the street at the public broadcaster and up the road at the university, talking about public service and public service journalism. I don't recall ever doing an economic panel with only women on it. This is a moment. Can you please celebrate a little bit? Thank you. It's, it's really something, and it wasn't constructed. It just happened. These are the right people to be talking to us tonight, and it's wonderful to be able to welcome them. Um, in no particular order, Janet Austin is the CEO of the um, YWCA in Metro Vancouver. Janet um, is one of the provinces, uh, leading one of the largest uh, nonprofits in the province. She's the former chair of the Greater Vancouver Board of Trade. She has reached the highest level of achievement in both social and business sectors. Um, she has guided the YWCA in Metro, uh, which has a uh, $28.3 million budget, so this is a significant operating budget. She's taken them through transitions, um, worked on building programs. She's worked very specifically with marginalized women, coming up with programming, um, working as a champion of social change in this community of ours. It's wonderful to have her with us tonight. Anita Huberman is the Chief Executive Officer of Surrey's Board of Trade. She has held this position for 11 years. She's been with the Board of Trade for a total of 24 years. She's a veteran. She has an extensive record of community service. In addition to working tirelessly as the CEO of the Board, um, she's also worked in the community. She's worked as uh, a President's Advisor at uh, the Simon Fraser University. She's been on the SFU India Advisory Council. She's worked with um, Surrey's Light Rail Coalition. She's done work in immigration, so she's got a vast network of community affiliations. So she brings that experience to us as well. Tamara Berman is the President and Chief Executive Officer at Van City. You've probably seen her around town at the end of the table. Van City is and continues to be, despite some challengers, Canada's largest community credit union. Um, she believes that banking has a vital role in developing healthy societies, that building the well-being of people is important for ensuring the long-term sustainability of communities in which they live. And she's really interested in us thinking about redefining wealth. What does that mean to us in a community context? Under Tamara's leadership, Van City has gained international recognition for its values-based banking model, for becoming the first Canadian financial institution invited to join the Global Alliance for Banking on Values, and she has also been invited to participate at the Vatican in a summit on creating a more inclusive economy. And finally, Phoenix Winter. She is the president of the Carnegie Community Centre Association. Phoenix. 
Tina brings real expertise to our panel. She was first homeless at 16 years of age. She thought that education would be her ticket out, and unfortunately, she found that having a master's degree didn't stop her from being homeless once again. She's grateful for the downtown east side, for the community that she's been able to attach to and develop within. She's the proud mother of a 21-year-old, me too. Um, she's the president of the Carnegie Community Center Association, as I mentioned, and she's the former co-chair of the Downtown East Side Community Economic Development and Strategic Action Committee. She's also the co-founder of an important drum circle in the community. It's called Harmony of Nations. Uh, she founded it with the late Norma Jean Baptiste, wherever you are. And she facilitates a writing group as well called Fire Writers, which is also located just down the road in the community of the downtown east side. Welcome to you all. So just before we start to hear from our panelists, I'd like each of you to hear from each other. So I'm going to invite you to turn to someone close to you um, in the audience and tell each other why you're here and what you're hoping to learn about as we um, move through the evening. So just turn to uh, a neighbor, save a couple of volunteers, report on what you, what you, what did you discover having that very brief conversation with your neighbor? What are you doing here? Taking action. Taking action, great, what else? What are you doing here? Learning something and then bringing it back to your community that does not speak English. Learning something and bringing it back to your community that may not speak English. Thank you. What else? One more. Yes. How we can make a difference. How we can make a difference. So personal action. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you for participating. People kind of, when I do that sometimes, people think, why is she making us work? Because we come together to be together. So sometimes we can force the issue by just putting a question into the room. So I appreciate you taking us up on that. So panel